Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Josh. And I'm Courtney. And we have an awesome episode. I took the words right out of your you mouth. You did. Today. We are so excited. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about children's apparel and specifically heat printing children's apparel as our primary topic, going through considerations of what to look for in a material, how to choose between different types of heat transfer vinyl and screen printed transfers, some blank apparel uh, supplier highlights, and really just talk about the markets and opportunity as our main topic today. Yeah, I think children's apparel definitely is where there's a lot of opportunity for apparel decorators because the market is just so vast for the opportunities you can print from onesies and children's blankets all the way up to um, kids in high school. So the children's apparel really goes um, a little bit there. Are you laughing because I messed up a word? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't help myself sometimes. Uh, so we're broadcasting live as always on Facebook Live so we can't edit out little things like that, blankets. <laughs> and we're also broadcasting live on GoToWebinar. So if you have questions throughout uh, today's morning show, Show, feel free to chat those in. We'll stop it several times to answer those. And we always like to start here with our look of the week. What do we have today? Today's look of the week is from Jamie Dittmer from Designs by Jamie. And this is just a really cool concept. So we show heat transfer foil and adhesive all the time here on the morning show. But this is a really unique application that we haven't seen. So she actually pressed it on the back of a um, camping or a stadium chair, which can easily be personalized because they're normally just a polyester based material. So pretty much any heat transfer vinyl or screen printed transfer will stick to these types of chairs. Um, when I source these chairs, I always just look for something that's a bit more high quality because some of the more inexpensive chairs from somewhere like a five below or something like that tend to be um, a little bit more of a vinyl base on the back so they can melt or something in the application. Right, right. And uh, I've seen these uh, personalized before, but typically when I see something like this, you see that top part uh, personalized and you see specifically a uh, name like for a ball player. So personalizing these for uh, little league games, baseball games is always a an opportunity as well. What I'm most impressed about in this particular application is four colors of foil <laughs> and the way she fit in the camper and the mountaintop and the trees. You know, there was some perfect placement going on and trimming of the foil uh, to achieve this result. So nice work, Jamie. Yeah, we really like that one. Um, you can always submit your looks of to, looks of the week to us um, on Facebook, on the Stalls All Things Heat Printing page here. We're broadcasting live through Instagram, or you can email them to us at tv at stalls.com. So anywhere there that you want to send us your looks of the week. We love seeing them every week um, on the show and tell, on the Facebook group, on Instagram. And we just um, usually pick our favorite, but there's always a multiple group of favorites that we have there. Yeah, it's, I think it's a good selection and a good variety. So we're open to any types of looks, any types of items, as long as it was completed on the heat press. That's the only thing you have to do to really qualify. So hi to Patsy from Texas. Hi uh, to Sherry from Northern Wisconsin. Gary, welcome uh, to the morning show. Uh, feel free to call out the state or the area that you're from. We're happy to welcome people from all over the world <laughs> to the Stalls TV morning show. So let's get into today's uh, core topic and that is heat printing, children's apparel, and really the market opportunity for decorating apparel. Now, a shift that I started to notice is, you know, we've been doing, I've been doing this since 2001, I believe and uh, have been pretty familiar with sort of the big box wholesale suppliers. And something I've noticed over the last five years in particular is you see companies uh, such as Sanmar, such as SNS Activewear, um, et cetera, et cetera, starting to expand their selection and really expand the available styles that are out there uh, for youth and down. Um, and I think that's a key indicator that people are having success in the children's apparel market because you see the selection growing and growing. What do you see sort of as some of the top opportunities uh, for decorating in this market and getting started? Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities. I think um, we can start when children are very young so we can look at even before they're born, babies' blankets and onesies and things like that for the arrival of a new baby. But then we see a lot more opportunities with birthdays because milestones are always big um, opportunities for custom apparel. So sure. t-shirts, onesies for first birthdays, second birthdays. I was just at a birthday party for my nephew this past weekend and of course he had a birthday shirt on that said it's my birthday and I know I made it for him last year for him to wear to school so everybody knew it was his birthday so just more opportunity for kids to to celebrate that and then we look into other special occasions like holidays so um, Halloween's coming up Christmas is coming up Thanksgiving even this is a huge opportunity for children's apparel with personalizing with monograms just adding um, different memory di different things for the event on the items as well I mean that's to me a huge benefit yeah so I think definitely milestones uh, birthdays being top of the list 
uh, holidays throughout the year. I even think of things that we've customized for my daughter, even for going out to a 4th of July picnic. Um, there's never a shortage of opportunities um, to personalize throughout the year with a focus on the children's market. Some of the other things that you see is uh, participation in sports uh, for youth or dance and other activities. So not only is there opportunity for these occasions, but there is the opportunity for group orders, whether that's for uh, children's apparel in the form of team wear, dance wear, etc. There um, really is a host of opportunities. So I think before we dive specifically into uh, material types and what to look for, um, there is one key thing that we need to cover when you start talking about decorating for children, and that's CPSIA. Uh, what does that stand for? Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act. Did you have to write that yeah, one down? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act. I put Courtney on the spot because in practice this morning, we had some fun with it. Just about every word that CPSI could stand for. Yeah, we tried. Uh, but when you, when you look at this, it's really important if you're gonna decorate for kids 12 and under, which is the majority of the children's market, because the toys they play with, the garments they wear, can come in contact with the mouth. So there's actually government legislation put out in 2008 that says those products have to be safe for coming in contact with the mouth, meaning they contain uh, less than a minimal amount of lead, phthalates, whatever, uh, because they're safe. And so how you really make sure your products are safe when you're decorating, and that needs to be the blank apparel and the decoration, is you rely on your supplier. And they should be publishing uh, certificates, CPSIA compliancy certificates that say, uh, these products are safe for decorating kids wear. If you haven't looked into that and you're decorating children's apparel, uh, that's a very important thing because your business could be at risk and really the, the kids that you decorate for uh, could be at risk otherwise. So it's legislation that's important and that matters. So when you look at that, um, I'll just point out on the stalls page where you access some of that information. If we can go to my computer screen here, you'll see on stalls.com and you'll probably see this from your different suppliers of products, um, our particular section is under the help and education link in the top right there. And then you can go down and you can look for CPSIA certificates. So when you click on that, it will load a page and it will give you the different material selections that are available. So if I wanna select CAD cut heat transfer materials that I'm working with, notice we left the word vinyl out for the certificate because vinyl typically implies polyvinyl chloride, which is bad basically for uh, meeting this compliancy click on a product like fashion film, and then up should pop the certificate that you can print out, uh, keep on file, perhaps even post to your website saying this is our supplier and our products uh, that we use do meet compliancy. We get these uh, tested uh, per regulations by a third party testing lab, which is cited there. The product gets approved um, and we actually publish one certificate because we are uh, publishing for different uh, countries and different requirements, but you'll see clearly uh, CPSIA designated on the list saying it's compliant. Right, and so as long as the components that you're sourcing, the um, heat transfer, the decoration, and the garment both meet the um, standards, then the item that you're reselling is going to meet that standard as well. So you don't have to go through as a decorator the steps to make sure your items are compliant. We kind of do that work on the back end from a heat transfer supplier. Yep, it's all something uh, as part of the certificate. And if you have questions on specific products, because I see those coming up, um, you can, if we can go back to the screen here, uh, if you pull up this page, the specific question was on Glow, you can download the certificate for the products. If it's not on this list, odds are it's not compliant. So it's important uh, to look for that, but you can download all those certificates straight from the website. Yep, so great tips there for sourcing gar for sourcing heat transfers, I guess. Okay, so once you know you have compliant products uh, that you're working with, really you need to have an idea about where you're gonna sell and how you're gonna sell. And I think one reason for the big growth in this market is one-off shirts for occasions, as you mentioned, or where I can go and buy uh, one product that's been created perhaps by an online boutique. So whether it's a standalone website and you have an online boutique or whether you're leveraging a third party marketplace such as Etsy, I know you've done a lot of shopping um, on those <laughs> particular a lot of shopping. sites. Uh, <laughs> because you're always saying, look at this company offering products. Are yeah. they using our heat transfer materials? And then we call them and say, hey, here's our, why, ours, why ours are the best. In case you're wondering why you've gotten a phone call. <laughs> yeah, in case you're wondering why you've gotten that call. So talk to us a little bit about um, 
sort of the marketplace on Etsy. How does somebody get started there? Yeah, so I think there's a variety of ways people are selling Etsy um, as a third party site, kind of like the way Amazon or et, um, eBay are, is really crucial for the children's apparel market because it's set up where it already has a search engine built in. People are already going to the site, they're going using the apps and they're searching for products for their children. So with Thanksgiving come up, I may be looking for a Thanksgiving onesie spe special for my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see a lot of people specifically using the search engine there for that. And so it's easy for a shop to um, set up a profile and add products to their shop through Etsy. Um, and of course, adding keywords and really setting, to be successful, you really have to set um, your shop up with certain tags and keywords and things so that your products are found when people are searching in that search engine. But it's incredibly easy to set up. There's a lot of tips along the way online. We have some on the Stalls TV site as well as for setting up your site. Um, one thing I really, really recommend when you start your business page on there is that you just have high quality photography and things that look the way you would want them to look to your customers. So, um, the, so the garment looks like a quality piece, the transfer looks like a, a quality piece. It really goes a long way online and making sure everything sells well. Yeah, so following best practices for the particular uh, site that you're trying to sell on. Uh, Etsy is a good selection because a lot of moms shop there that are shopping for their kids. So making sure you connect that product to the community uh, is a great way to do that. I know uh, people have been really successful uh, through Facebook as well in gaining traction and visibility uh, for the products they sell through Facebook ads targeted to that uh, specific demographic of who may be shopping for uh, their children around special occasions. And you can even target by um, different birthdays and other uh, age groups, parts of the country, uh, different fields. Yeah, social media is huge really in building the children's apparel audience because you can easily target moms of a certain age group that you know have children that maybe follow certain blogs that indicate that they have children. And so Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, all of those are really, really key if you're trying to dive into the children's apparel marketplace. Okay, so hopefully you're uh, uh, tuned in here. We see Susan from Arlington. Welcome, Justin, Yo-Yo. Evelyn from Winter Springs, Florida, Stacy from Baltimore, and Joe from Shelby Township are showing on my screen. Appreciate all of you joining on the morning show. Let's talk uh, a little bit about some of your favorite blank apparel suppliers and perhaps pull up their websites. Uh, starting, I think Cavio has to be at the top of your list, right? Yeah, Cavio is definitely um, at the top of my list because when you look from infant apparel all the way up to youth and you're trying to find sizes that, um, for one, can use a lot of market. So if I'm selling children's apparel and I want to go all the way from an infant upwards through uh, maybe companion styles for sisters or um, brothers or something like that all the way through the market, then I can do this from the Cavio site. And they have a lot of really unique stuff. Um, they have tri-blend style apparel, they have stripe, they have patterns, um, a lot of their fringe tanks. Um, this one we're looking at here is another one of their patterned textured shirts that's really popular. And so I can source things that are very trendy in the retail market um, for my wholesale business. And so I definitely recommend looking at Cavio if you're serious about getting into the children's apparel. Yeah, I think the, the critical thing for me, especially if you're selling uh, children's apparel to groups, is being able to maintain that same style from uh, a very small child up through even uh, a lady's garment. So when you're decorating for schools and you want to unify them uh, around a garment, a brand, a message, having that same style across the board uh, is always helpful. Of course, pairing that with a unisex uh, tee or whatever for dad um, yeah. is another key element. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we see a lot of those companion style tees like the mommy and me, the um, daddy and me type shirts. And so that's another great place to source uh, a youth shirt or an infant shirt that matches the moms. Good, and I know you have a whole list here. So the next one I'm just gonna pull up is Boxercraft. We use them quite a bit. Uh, they're a sponsor here of Stalls TV and donate blanks to us all the time. Yeah, they have a ton of um, really youth garments that are unique. So we still see a lot of the raglans, tank tops, things that are very fashionable, um, the oversized jersey, some of that stuff that was really popular for spirit wear. Um, if you're selling and your niche, I think it comes down to defining your niche for sure when you're looking at these suppliers. But if I'm selling to um, youth apparel to maybe schools, dance teams, cheer squads, this is absolutely a supplier I would consider. Yeah, I like Boxercraft. Um, you hit it, hit the nail on the head with talking, focusing on your customer first, and then having an idea um, of your customer in mind as you go out and shop these blank apparel suppliers. So if I were trying to create a game day look uh, for perhaps uh, game day at the school to support, you know, Friday night football, whatever it might be, um, this could be a piece from Boxercraft that would fit well that I can carry across from uh, the elementary schools up through the high schools to perhaps even the parents as a concept. So Boxercraft. Um, has been a great supplier. Now, when you start to look around, 
that you get sort of outside of the mainstream large suppliers and in the children's apparel market we see a lot of sort of uh, niche or smaller suppliers focused on children's apparel only. I think one of the big trends that I'm seeing is you'll have a company that's pretty progressive and sourcing. They'll actually go out and they'll either source a line of children's apparel that's already been created or they'll design their own line and they'll bring in those particular styles for a season. Uh, much like Wholesale Boutique does except in sort of the uh, ladies market with fashionable stuff there with accessories. Um, you've seen that before and I know you've sourced from a couple of them. So talk to us a little bit about how I might connect and some of the best ones in that space. Yeah, and so we see um, more of these, I guess what I would consider um, boutique or embroidery blank suppliers. Um, ARB blanks is a popular one. Wild About, Wild About Me blanks is another one. Um, and these suppliers then source some, they bring in a group of garments. And so um, a few of them will even offer seasonal ordering. And so you can kind of get on the front end. Right now, I know for sure I'd be thinking about Christmas. We're hitting October. October, and so you want to start to set up any Christmas PJs like you see there. Yeah. Um, as they're available, you want to start to source those kind of items, take pre-orders if they're available for any other products because that will allow you to get your stock for those items and you know once they're sold out they're sold out and so if I order a hundred of these Christmas pajamas and I sell them on my Etsy site, um, once I hit that number they're gone and so it's kind of a first come first serve type thing that's a good way to promote and get quick orders and people to really rush on making a purchase rather than waiting and delaying till closer to Christmas. Yeah and I like the pre-order concept because you get on one of these styles that you know are going to be hot you get in the pre-order group and now all of a sudden you have a bit of exclusivity uh, to your offering as well. Now of course there are other decorators participating in that pre-order with you but you have something that's not readily available just at a uh, big box wholesale supplier. It's something that's unique to my business and if I plan right, and it takes some planning, so there are some risks to it with inventory uh, on a pre-order situation. You need to make sure you have the client base um, so you don't bury all of your profit in inventory not printed. But if you plan well, um, there's some real opportunity there. ARB Blanks is one in particular we did on a morning show where we actually decorated a kid shirt to match the 18-inch American Doll shirt um, as a concept. So there's a lot of unique things uh, that you can get from some of these boutique suppliers. Now, uh, one last line that I want to point out uh, is the Rabbit Skins line uh, from LAT Apparel because they have probably the, the widest selection um, of blanks out there in the market. So let's take a look at that website. Yeah, and you can purchase um, the LAT Rabbit Skins brand from a variety of distributors. And so um, CNMR actually distributes their products now if you're set up purchasing products through them. SNS Active, where I know, distributes their products. I've even bought them on Amazon on occasion when I just needed a quick 1D to print something if you need to fill in an order and you need one extra one. Um, it's a great way, especially if you have Prime like I do, to quickly get those onesies. Um, but they really um, kind of lead in the, the basic blanks of what you're looking for if you're just printing like onesies, sweatshirts, toddler t-shirts. They even have some unique styles like a raglan, um, an athletic one that has some striping that would work well as like a fan jersey style. So a few different items there as well. Uh, lots of ruffles and fringe. Um, the children's wear kind of has uh, trending items all on its own and uh, we, we're showing a lot of stuff intended for um, girls at the moment but there is equal amounts available from companies like Sanmar in the category of youth that has like performance textiles and all the things you're seeing trending in menswear available for uh, boys as well so there's certainly a lot of opportunity. You see a lot of their camo products and different uh, prints that you mentioned earlier available uh, for boys as well so there's opportunity uh, across the market. So go um, to a trade show, surf the web, view the Stalls TV morning show with your customer in mind and seek out things that delight that customer. It's going to increase your value proposition and really make you successful, able to command a higher price and not have the price pressure that a lot of uh, decorators cite as one of their uh, top challenges. So, so the uh, children's market is definitely a valid market. Um, you have something that you want to decorate for us in children's of course, apparel today. Yeah. All right, so let's head over to the heat press for this edition of Make It Monday.
So fitting for today's Make It Monday, we're actually going to be personalizing a kid's dress. Um, and so I went ahead and chose a kid's dress from Cavio rather than going with a onesie um, because we've personalized a lot of onesie on Stalls TV and there's a few things to consider as far as just isolating the print area. But we look at some of these more fashionable pieces that Josh had mentioned that have the ruffles um, and different seams and how to print these successfully without um, getting the ruffles in the way of the print area or smashing down and ruining these on the print location. And so we're going to personalize this today with a popular finish, which is just a foil and adhesive print um, on the item. And so I'm going to start by loading this onto my 6x10 platen. If you have the Hotronics Fusion heat press and you're going to do children's apparel, I 100% or any interchangeable heat press, um, I 100% recommend this platen because it's going to work perfect for any print location that you're going to want to do for children's apparel. And so if you're looking to do onesies um, for infants, if you're looking to do this is actually an 18 month dress from Cavio, any of those, um, you can easily personalize that with this platen because you're looking at a print area of about four, in this is a six by 10, and your graphic's gonna be anywhere from a three and a half upwards to five inches for these um, infant style garments. And so it gives you a good opportunity there for being able to print them and isolating the print location. Go ahead and preheat and check my pressure real quick before I um, apply my application. The adhesive applies with a very light pressure, so I want to confirm that I have that on this application. I'm going to line up my graphic. Since I'm printing an 18-month dress, this graphic is going to be 5 inches by 5 inches. I always make it proportionate to the width, um, unless the height is very high, then I usually go height. But I want to be within that box of a 5 by 5 for the graphic. Once I have that loaded on and straight, I can press this. The CAD Cut Adhesive product, this will be a two-step application. And so adhesive, this is actually what was shown on that stadium chair in the beginning of the show. Press this for five seconds. Very light pressure, so you make sure that you're not driving the adhesive down through the garment. This will give me a good surface to start my foil application. So we've got a clear adhesive down here, and then I'm just going to overlay a color of foil. And so I want to go color side up over the adhesive. I'm going to cover this with a cover sheet just to keep it down whenever the heat press locks up and to protect the garment. And I'm going to increase my pressure because the second step is where I really want to drive in that foil and get a good application. So I'm looking at more of a firm pressure on this specific application and applying it for 10 seconds. This will be a completely cold peel, so if I was doing this as a large order, I could easily set these aside, come back and peel them later. You saw that all these ruffles got off of the print location with that 6x10 platen, so that made it for a nice print. And then once this cools down completely, I could peel my carrier. The foil only sticks in the places where the adhesive was, and I have a completed design. And so this makes a great print for personalizing um, on a lot of these dresses. Baby Bear is a perfect companion to you if you're doing uh, Mommy and Me shirts and you're also doing a um, Mama Bear or a Daddy Bear or anything like that with items. So as you can see, using that 6x10 platen is really crucial for getting a flat print location across a variety of items. It works perfect for all of your graphic sizes for anywhere from um, a newborn infant all the way upwards of um, 2T for that 6x10 graphic area. And of course, there's smaller sizes that I recommend if you're getting into youth items for interchangeable platens and you want to print them effectively. I would look at something like an 11 by 15 or an 8 by 10 for those sizes as well. This has been Make It Monday. I'm going to head back over to Josh. We can answer any questions and elaborate more on some of the print techniques. So just because I have the shirt, I, I think the appropriate term is Papa Bear. Papa Bear. And not Daddy Bear. So that's uh, with the same amount of, of characters. But I actually do own one of those shirts. I can't believe you didn't wear it today. Yeah, I, I think I got it for Father's Day. So there's another opportunity um, for uh, selling children's apparel, connecting it to a gift for like Mother's or Father's Day. So plenty of opportunity. Now there are a ton of uh, questions and comments coming in uh, through our live stream. So. Uh, we missed you at Fort Worth too, Susan. We're sorry we didn't uh, make it this year. Um, <laughs> but Jenna was there, so hopefully you got to connect with her and the rest of the Stalls team. One of the questions that I see here 
uh, coming through had to do specifically with sourcing uh, pet apparel, um, which is, I don't know, it's, we think of that <laughs> when we think of children's apparel, I'm not sure why, but it was an odd request that, that came in. So I uh, just want to pull up the screen right now. Um, LAT Apparel actually has a line called uh, Doggy Skins. I pulled up uh, one of the particular uh, blanks here that are offered in a bunch of different styles. So I don't know, do you know of any other suppliers other than LAT Apparel off the top of your head? Um, not off the top of my head, but I do know there's a few online suppliers. Um, we actually did a morning show way back um, on dog apparel. It's probably more, what, 110 episodes in or something? I remember I called off that day because everybody brought their dogs. Yeah, we did have dogs on the episode, <laughs> but um, that episode, if you see on the stallstv.com, you can look under the morning show tab. Um, it'll list a lot of other suppliers as well for um, specifically for pet apparel. Good. As we scroll through uh, some of these other questions. Do you mind going through some of the looks we have here so we can show more uh, styles and what we've done? Yeah, really this just kind of connects uh, the heat transfer vinyl market to children's apparel, which is one of the most popular decorations. And so this one would be perfect for a birthday. Um, this is where we're talking a lot about those, the popularity in uh, milestone shirts. And so this one uses two colors of cat gut fashion film to create an easy custom um, shirt. This one is also from Rabbit Skins. This is one of those athletic looking shirts. So if the theme of the birthday party is something sporty, this is a perfect opportunity. Um, and I even like this for just having fan apparel for the little um, kids as well. So great one there. Of course, we have a lot of glitter. When we talk about children's apparel, it's one of the top selling products on the, the market for this um, customer base. So this is a multicolor glitter, perfect for Valentine's Day. Um, and then you start to think about selling children's apparel. If you're getting into this niche, I would really plan my calendar around when I start to show these items. So you want to be showing right now for sure Halloween, showing Thanksgiving, and getting ready to show Christmas here in the next three to four weeks if you're selling it. This, of course, I'd start showing these in early January. Um, as soon as Christmas really ends is when you start moving on to um, some of these holidays like Valentine's Day. Personalization is big, so being able to add a monogram to any item. This is another multicolor glitter flake, um, just on a item. I believe this is also from Rabbit Skin, so it's kind of one of their two two onesies. And then we have another one um, as well, using multicolored glitter again, just using a monogram frame, monogramming all of that. And now, um, if you haven't seen it, stalls. If you don't have a heat transfer vinyl. Um, if you don't have a cutter and the ability to cut this yourself with monogramming, we did just launch the monogram template designer in the CAD cut template designer. And so that's um, why I wasn't being rude. I was <laughs> frantically working to pull that up because I'm like, we should show that right now. See, we were on the same. And so if you go to uh, stalls.com under the letters, numbers, and design tab, you'll see a link called uh, CAD cut templates right here in the top of heat transfer designs. Now you do need to log into your account to be able to use this because this is exclusively for customers. But once you're logged in, you can click on go to the designer. And this is a great way to order designs uh, cut for you ready to heat apply. Now the new functionality, which is still a, a secret uh, right now is the monogram. So you have the circle, the diamond and the universal monogram that are set up. And our design team uh, did a tremendous job and our programming team on building this. They've been working for quite some time. Uh, on this tool to help you grow your business. So let's just pull up the monogram circle. Uh, very simple, you can pick the monogram style that you want with the frame. You can see we have some stuff, uh, some different frames that are intended for different uh, market verticals to help you work around your calendar and merchandise in that way. But once you select the particular concept that you want, uh, it's really simple. It pulls up the monogram. If I want to change that uh, initials, I can change it very quickly uh, to whatever I want. This would actually be your initials, right? That is my initials. And then if you want to order multiples, you can change the material right um, on the screen, change the product out. It also allows you to order the glitter flake directly from the screen as well in the particular color, and then it customizes. Now you can select this object and you can always make a duplicate. So let's say you have multiple uh, kids that want to uh, create here. You just drag and drop another one on the screen, and then I'm able to change the initials uh, for that particular one. And then it will just customize. So you start to build this all the while your price is populating uh, live on this side of the screen. So let me give you an example. If I wanted to order four different uh, items individually monogrammed for individual kids out of this gold glitter flake, I'd be looking at eight dollars uh, for those four pieces. Of course, personalizing the monogram specific to them. Uh, so very affordable. Stalls cuts 
weeds this for you. That's the best part. No weeding. Especially uh, with glitter. <laughs> on your part needed at all. And you can order the CAD cut adhesive straight from here. You do need to purchase the roll of foil separate. Send this to you ready to go. So I'm really excited about that monogram functionality. As I mentioned, I think probably six months ago, this CAD cut templates is a solid foundation and we're going to build a lot more tools, a lot more functionality on top of this designer, all, all aimed at helping you grow your business. Um, so that would be exciting. What other types of questions do we have coming in, Joe? Uh, can you scroll down through the Facebook feed so we can see what else is happening? All right, we're seeing some shout outs to the foil and uh, customers loving the dresses from Gina. Thanks for that feedback. Uh, sure other Canadians would love to hear more about Canadian suppliers. We can do some work there and draw on some expertise there. Um, I do know Sanmar uh, definitely has some uh, supply in Canada, but we'll look into that for other suppliers. Um, anything else down on the bottom or are we pretty caught up with questions? All right, just shout outs from where everybody's from. Okay, anything else you want to conclude with on Children's Apparel? What's next week's episode about, do you know? I don't know. It's a surprise. Surprise episode <laughs> next week. I think of blank apparel. Blank apparel blank. Yeah, so if you like apparel sourcing. blanks, one of the things we try to do here, and I know they're always um, very well uh, reviewed episodes, is try to show you trending blank apparel because it's really tough. Unless you get out to trade shows um, every year and often there's only one show a year in your area, it's nice to see seasonal offerings from different blank apparel uh, suppliers. So if you have a supplier that you connect with that you're like, I wish Stalls TV would show what they have or other people should know about this supplier, uh, give us that recommendation. We're happy to work with anybody. We want to report the trends and the latest styles to you so you can stay on point in your business and, and grow your sales. So thanks for attending this morning's uh, Stalls TV morning show. We'll see you next week. See you then.